OK, so <clears throat> welcome to this second week of React. And uh, uh, just to recap, uh, last week uh, we understood uh, the basic structure okay, of a um, React application, which is basically a, a, nested, a nesting of components. Okay? So we, we saw how we could create components and how the primary function of every component is to return a portion of the render tree by calling other components and so on. Okay, so we, we decompose, we structured a web page into a set of nested components that call each other and uh, uh, in a purely functional way. So every component is a function, and this function doesn't have any side effect, and is only able to create uh, its output, the return statement that needs to return a, a tree of components or HTML elements at the bottom, uh, relying only on its uh, arguments, which are, which are the properties of the component itself. Okay, so we saw that uh, we, are, we have some information at the top level, uh, last week, we, we faked some information into a data structure, and we propagated information from top to bottom in the hierarchy of the page. Every component receives from its uh, father component uh, some information that it needs uh, to render itself uh, and to render its children. Okay? Um, so the, the, the functions uh, corresponding to the components usually have some part where they analyze their properties and some part where they build the render tree, build the rendering of the component itself, which is normally the return statement. Okay? Today, we are going to add the, the concept of state. Okay? Because up to now, the user interface is, uh, well, with what we know, is static. We, we create a user interface, but we cannot change it. We have no means of changing the information due to user interaction. Because that would uh, defeat uh, you know, the, the assumption that every component is, a, is functional in nature, so it doesn't have any side effect. So any component, for example, the component for this row or the component for this button cannot modify the score. Okay? Because that would be a side effect modifying some variable uh, from inside the component. It's not, it's not, it's not possible. It's not in the, um, in, in the logic of React. And if we would do it uh, in some way with using some tricks, uh, that would uh, create a problem with Re React itself. For example, this number 10 here, we know where it is. We know where it's located, right? It's located in, in our example, in some, uh, where is that? Uh, models uh, is here. Is inside a, a data structure. In our app, uh, in our example, it was inside fake question. So we, you, we could imagine, okay, that you know, in a way, by passing some parameter, a reference to the object, we can modify this value. Uh, we don't want to do that, because if I modify one value inside this object, okay, then, of course, that object is changed. But how can the browser know that the object has changed, and uh, so which part of the page needs to be updated? needs to be modified. Okay, so um, changing the information on which uh, the components depend, on which the component base their own rendering, must be done in a way that the component is aware of the change and can recompute itself. Otherwise, I, I change the minus 10 into a minus 9 and nobody notices that, and uh, now the number is, will not be updated in the page. Okay, so we need to 
to uh, maintain the model in which every component depends on its properties. And uh, we find a mechanism to change the values from which these properties are computed, are determined, in a way that the component itself is aware of the change. And so it can modify its rendering. And that is where React is very, hot, very much uh, optimized. React uh, understands the minimal amount uh, of components to be rendered when some information changes. So this is uh, a control that we have with the library. Okay? The library will help us to update the page whenever something changes and to update that with a minimum amount of effort if we follow the rules, okay? And what are these rules? Oh, uh, we need uh, some escape mechanism from the functional way of uh, developing components that we used last week, okay? And so there is a mechanism that uh, React calls hooks uh, that escape the normal functional top-down rendering and top-down flow of information. Okay, so these are special functions with a special behavior that we must use. So there is a group of these, fun of these hooks functions. Um, today we'll get familiar with, that, with one of them. And uh, they go beyond the normal top-down functional rendering. Hmm? So they allow us to do something more, okay? Um, <clears throat> a component, as we said, is a pure function. No, it is a purely functional aspect. So it cannot have, in the implementation of a, of a component, must not have any side effect. We should not try to create side effect inside functional components. And so <clears throat> it cannot remember anything. No state, it means that uh, a functional component may declare some variables, of course, for doing the computation, local variables, but these variables will be computed from the properties. So a component only sees its properties and computes something, variable, local variable, and so on, from the properties and then renders the tree. But those local variables are not remembered. The second time the component is executed, the function is executed, they will be recomputed from scratch. It doesn't remember from the previous time. Okay? In the functional way. Um, then the designer of, uh, okay, uh, React defined this uh, hooks mechanism that is a way of overcoming the limitation of pure functions in a way that is uh, controlled by the rendering engine, okay? Um, and so with hooks, uh, we can do whatever we, not, we cannot do with, normal, with a normal function. So we can manage state, we can manage uh, um, asynchronous resources, we can, manage, we can handle side effects, uh, and so on. Hmm? Let's see how. There are <clears throat> some predefined hooks uh, that are already in the, in the library, and then you can find other hooks uh, in other libraries. Uh, and all of them, by convention, as a name, that they are functions. All the hooks are functions that start with use. Use state, use effect, and so on. Use context, and so on, okay? Oh, every, each one of these functions is uh, behaves in a, in a different way. They behave differently because they fulfill different purposes. Um, today we focus more on, uh, on use state, which is a hook function to create uh, a state variable. So a value that can be remembered across the different calls of a function, of a functional component, and, uh, <coughs> sorry, and change. And it can be changed, uh, its value can be changed. Hmm? And later on we'll uh, use a lot of use effect uh, to handle the asynchronous communications uh, and context for sharing the state across different components and so on. Huh? But there are many of them. The, the idea is that we, we need to use this mechanism for handling state. So how? Uh, this is a, is a general picture of the behavior of a, of a component. Okay? Uh, the, the goal, 
of a, of a function component, we know is to create an element tree. So a tree of elements that may be HTML elements, it may be other React components, and passing some properties to those elements. And we recursively will change those functions uh, and uh, we'll try to recall those functions and we execute them with the properties. What is the information that the, our own component can, can know, can rely on for creating the element tree? Only <clears throat> the properties and today we are adding the state. So we're saying that a function, a function component, must create an element tree starting from the value, the current value of its properties plus the current value of a state. Okay? And today we learn how to create this state. The difference is that the properties are always read-only and should always be managed as read-only variables. Never try to change any prop because it will not work, okay? The change will not be permanent, will not, will not be propagated uh, anywhere else. If we need to change something to help all something, we create a state variable, and the state variables are accessible to the component itself and can be used. And this arrow, the little arrow, says, tells me that we can also modify those state variables that are not normal variables, are variables created by the use state hook. And then there is context which is just a form of state that is shared across different components. So we'll see it later what it means. So what we are adding today are these two arrows and the creation of the state. State is uh, the location <clears throat> where a component holds some data. The state is owned by one component. Okay? The state can be read and used as a normal variable, and this value can be used in the rendering logic, of course, and its value can be passed to other children components uh, as a prop. It's just a value. And the state, uh, so, uh, the, the state uh, container is private to a component. The, the value that is, con the current value which is contained is just a value that can be used anywhere, okay? Can be passed down, can be used in computation and so on. And then we can be, we can ask to change the state. We cannot uh, directly change a state variable, but we can ask React to change it so that the React will schedule its change in the, best moment to do it, and understand the consequence of that change uh, in terms of which components need to be re-rendered. Hmm? Um, okay, we know already about properties, and the properties are a top-down mechanism. Okay, a property is received by a child, a child component from its parent component. There's no other way. Props always flow from the top to the bottom, okay? And we know that because we, when we render a component, we specify the property and its value. The value can be a string or an object, okay, depending on your you quote or you brace it. And inside the component, uh, props dot uh, name of the property can be used to access it, access it okay? And whenever we write props dot something, Always remember, this is read-only. Props dot means read-only. Never try to modify it, okay? We can use it, we can make a copy, we can sort the copy or whatever, but don't change the props themselves, okay? Uh, one of the promises that uh, uh, React makes uh, is that whenever the value of a property of a component for some reason changes, then the component is re-executed, re-rendered. Okay, for now we don't have any mechanism for changing the prop. So it was all static. But 
this mechanism, this very controlled mechanism of passing props is uh, for this purpose. N React knows which properties are received by which component, and so can control, can detect the change of any of these properties, and this can be trigger the rendering of the component itself, of the component tree. Um, <coughs> and the state is a, a container or local data private to a component, and this component is created by the use state hook. Okay? So how does use state work? Use state is a function that can be imported from the React library. Okay? And uh, when you call this function, it will return an array of two elements. The first element is a reference to the current value of the state. The second element is a function that we can call if we want to change the state. Okay, so your state creates a state container somewhere and gives me a reference to the current value that I can use like a prop. I can use this value, in this case it's called hidden, in my rendering code normally. In the same way I, could, I would use a prop, in the same way. It's a current value that is to be considered constant. I can use the current value of a, of a state but I can modify it directly. If I need to modify the value of a state, I must use the set hidden function that will set the new value. The only catch is the new value will not be applied immediately, but it will be applied at the next rendering of the component. Okay, so what happens is that if I call uh, set hidden to true or false, then the current value of the hidden state variable will not change in this execution of the function. But then after the execution of the function, React will execute the scheduled set hidden, the scheduled state change. It will change the value and then it will detect that one state variable belonging to a component has changed, and so the component will be refreshed, re-executed. And then a second time, the component will render again with the new value of the state variable, which in this second execution will be constant again. I cannot modify it in this execution. But I know that I can modify it for the next one. Hmm? So that is the way we are trying to read it. Uh, use state creates a state container, and the argument of use state is the default, the initial value of the state itself. Okay, the state is created with some initial value, which is the argument of use state. Uh, and then it can be updated by calling the, the, the state change function. Normally, uh, we tend to call these variables in, with related names. Uh, so hidden is the name of the state. Uh, set hidden is the setting function for the variable, okay? We, we, we define these names in couples. And uh, how does it work? Uh, let's try to maybe modify this page here in some way, okay? Uh, let's add some, some content to this page just to understand the mechanism of, of uh, So maybe after the navigation bar, uh, we can uh, write something here, or maybe, sorry, in the, I want to modify one component. Uh, yeah, maybe the date, uh, no, not the date. Okay, let's add one number, okay. I, I want to add one number of, uh, of likes, for example, okay to this page. 
So I can uh, maybe go inside the question component uh, and say that uh, uh, the number, the question email, and we can add one other number here, which is, uh, for example, the likes, okay? So I add another column that contains the likes uh, that are maybe four, I don't know. Hmm? Yeah, I need to shorten the columns uh, so they can. Okay, have, we have four likes, for example, okay? And this now is, is the number that we want to be able to change. Okay. Um, or yes. So instead of writing a number here, we could define a state variable inside the component. So inside the component means inside the inside the function, we can create a new state variable like the number of likes and we define a function for changing the likes and this object is, is created by a use state by with a starting value of zero for example. Like that. And so we need to import also a use state from React. Okay? And so in this way, we are creating a, a state variable called likes inside this component with the initial value of zero. Okay? So uh, we, now it's four, we can use this number four directly here in the rendering of the component. See, it goes to zero. So we are inserting the value of an expression inside the rendering tree. Okay? And it's zero. Big Y is zero because the default value was zero. Now, we, what we want to do is that if the user clicks on the likes uh, string, this number increases, okay? Maybe we set it to one or to two or to three or something like that. So how can we do that? We can attach an event handler to this uh, component. By itself, a state doesn't change. It, it can only change if somebody calls this setting function. But the call in this function can, can only happen after some user actions, when the user clicks, okay? So we can use some event handlers, like the on click, for example, on this uh, instruction to execute a callback that will change the state. Okay? So the callback will be, can be an inline function, something like this. And in this inline function, we call set likes to, I don't know, one. Let's start from one. So what are we doing here? We are attaching an, an event tender to the click event onto the column component. So if we click anywhere inside the last column, it will call this callback. And this callback will call set likes to one. And immediately after, it will print likes 
which is the value of this state. So if I save this, and I click, it will become one. Let's try it again. Like start from zero, because the component is, run, is being rendered with the default value of the state. When I click on this area, the callback is executed, and the state is changed, and the component is rendered with a new value of the state. Uh, by the way, it's, it all, everything happens very fast, very quickly, but uh, uh, what happens is that the component is rendered once with the initial value of the state. Then when I click on this, it will change the state values. So the first time we, I go here, I execute this, this component. I see here the default value. And the, of course, this callback is not executed yet. It's only well, set aside, it's only being registered. When I execute the callback, the state changes. Uh, changing the state uh, is something that is known to React. So React knows that this state has been changed, it knows which is the component that owns the state, and remember the state object is, a, is private to a component, and so it says, okay, I need to refresh this component. Because one of the conditions that require the re-render of the component has been triggered, and the conditions are a property change or a state change. Whenever a property changes on a component, it is re-executed. Whenever a state changes inside a component, it is re-executed. Plus other, but for now, these are the two main conditions. And so React knows that it needs to render the question component and only the question component, not the whole page. Only this component needs to be re-rendered. And uh, the component we start again from scratch, and we will render with at this point with a new value of the likes state. What is strange is that the, the second time when we see the one, the, the component is uh, executed as a normal function from the beginning to the end. But the second time, and this is where this function is special, the use state will not create a new variable with default z value equal to zero. But it will reuse the previous state object without forcing a new default value. Now, if you read it like that without understanding that use state is a special function, you say, okay, I'm creating likes equal to zero. The first time is zero. Then I click, I set it to one. But when the function is executed again, I'm recreating a new likes and it will be again zero if we only read it in a functional way. That is why use state is special. It creates some value outside the component, and the second time it, I will execute the function, it will find the value that is already there, and so it does not recreate it, and therefore does not reapply the default value, but it will keep the previous value. So keep in mind that this value here, the default value, is only used the first time the component is created the first time the function is executed. All the other times, uh, we are basically attaching to a state value that has already been created and stored outside the function. This is what we call the escape mechanism for storing value outside the purely functional execution model. Okay? Um, And so, of course, uh, we don't need to write set the state to one. The real value, the real idea would be to increase the state, uh, so it could write uh, likes plus one, for example. And so if we do that, 
every time we click, uh, the number increases. Then we will learn to do it better, but <coughs> <coughs> this is just the idea. Every time I do this action, I execute these set likes. This will schedule a change of state, and the change of state will schedule the re-rendering of the component itself. And this is the only way we can change something. Define a state and call the set function with a new value in the state. Once the state is changed, we recompute the whole component. And uh, this number here, likes, uh, can be used anywhere in the rendering code. Uh, right now, we can use it inside uh, this component, question component, and all its children. How can you use the, the state in a, in a child? Well, by passing the current value as a property. Right now, this component doesn't have any, child, any children. No? It doesn't have any children. So we cannot use this value anywhere else in this page. But uh, do I want to reuse this value somewhere else? Maybe, maybe imagine that they want to use this value in another part of the page. Maybe the like button is also repeated at the bottom of the page, for example. Okay, so how can I do it? I want to have, maybe the page is very long, I want to have the likes at the top and also at the bottom. Stupid idea, but just for the sake of exercise. So I could have maybe another component uh, in, uh, in the app where after the answers uh, you have a, a like component. And of course I need to create a like component. Like dot JSX. and uh, uh, function like, props, and then we export default like, right? I never remember the syntax. No, it's not default, this. It's better to use like this syntax, like and uh, return let me just try to insert it uh, and then on up we need to import it from the components okay that's here hmm? I just added one component uh, right now I only printed them one string just to check whether it's alive, okay? So let's think we want to replicate these likes here also at the bottom. We don't want to use another use state. If I create another use state here, likes, use like, uh, set likes, that will create a, a, a separate and independent state variable, okay? Use state zero, for example, and uh, it will create, uh, sorry, I need to import this, okay? It will create like zero, but when I increase this state, the other one will not change. Fair enough, okay? It's a separate state variable. Every state variable is private to a component. I want two components to share the same state variable. It's not possible. The only option I have is to move 
the state variable to a common father of the two components so that the common father can propagate the value down to the two children that needs to access that value. So every state variable is private to one component. The current value of this variable can be, propagate, can be propagated down to all the children that we need. But it can never be propagated up nor side, sideways. Only down. So if I want a value to be accessible to two different components, this state value must be defined in a common ancestor, in a common father. And then this common father will pass the value through to the two children. How? As a property. This is called state lifting, which is a common operation in React. I have a state that is used in one component, fine, I define it in that component. Does it need to be used by its children? Fine, we can pass it down that property. Does it need to be used in other components which are not their children? No way. We need to lift the state up until it's in a component that encompasses all the children that need this value. So in this case, we have a very simple hierarchy. And so lifting the state from uh, the question component up so that it can be also be seen and used by the light component means lifting the state to I remove it from here and I add it to the up to the app component. Again, I need to import it. I define it up there. So now the state is defined. Uh, we, don't know, we don't always need to go to the app component, okay, which is the top level. We only need to go up until we found a, a common father. Okay? But now we can s s have this value, likes, uh, and pass it down to the like component uh, like a normal prop. And also now to the question component. So now we have one state whose current value is copied to two different props of two different components. When the state changes, the props of the component will change, and so the component will be re-executed. That's the rule of React. And so inside question component, we don't have the state anymore, so we have an error here. We don't have likes, we will have props, dot likes. Because now it's a property that we can get. Let's remove this on click, of course. I need to remove the on click because, okay, set likes, uh, I don't have this function anymore. Is not a function which is visible inside this component. No. So for the moment, uh, let's remove it. And uh, we can do the same on the like component. Instead of creating my own state, uh, we just do it the properties. So when I re-render this, Undefined, I don't like it uh, because it didn't save the app. Okay, I forgot to save app. So now we have likes uh, initialized to zero. I'm passing likes as a normal property to two different components. So I'm again in the normal flow of information from top to bottom. A component that adds some information, which in this case is a state, and this is passed down as props to children components. And these props, use them to render, to modify the rendering. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. If I, now, okay, now I cannot change it anymore because you removed the event handler, so I cannot increase this value. 
let's imagine mm, no so I want to be able to click on likes and increase this number like I did before where do we attach the event handler well, I should attach the event handler to that column like I did before, or to a button or something inside the component. But the component itself uh, cannot call the setLikes function because setLikes function is a private function to up to the father component. So I want my children or some of my children to be able to call this function of mine. This is what I up thinks. I want to propagate a value to my children, okay, and also to give to some of them the possibility of changing this value, maybe in a controlled way. So what I could do is I could create a helper function, a handler function, myself, like increase state, increase likes, const, increase likes equal to a function that calls use state, use, sorry, set likes, likes plus one. Okay, I'm defining a function with any other syntax you prefer. And whenever I call this function, increase likes, uh, that will call the set likes on uh, my variable, okay? So what I could do is to pass this function as a property to my children. To the children that I need to be able to call the function itself. For example, the question components. So I can pass another properties, increase or increase likes, equal to increase likes. I'm passing the function name, okay? I'm not calling the function. And so inside the question component, I say this file. Inside the question component, now I have a props called increase likes. And so I can use this function as the event tender for the click. On click equal to props dot increase likes. So let's see if it works. Now we have this component here. If I click here, every time I click, this number increases like it did before. But now also the other one is changing. OK? So we see the flow of information. We have a, a click on a part of a component. This click uh, triggers and event tender. This event tender in this case is not a local function, but it's a function that is received through a property. So actually, I'm executing this increase likes property here, which is mapped to the increase likes function that I defined here. And this increase likes schedules a change of the light state, which is a local state on this function. I click on a component in question component, and I execute a function on the app component that will change or schedule the change of a state variable inside the app component. Yes?
No. Um, yes, I understand the question. Say, I, the next step is after the state has changed, what does React do? React will check, of course, uh, this state has changed, so app will be re-executed. Okay? For sure. And so it will check the rendering tree and will re-evaluate these components and check whether each of these components needs to be re-executed as well or not. For example, navigation bar doesn't depend on anything that changed. Question number one. This is the strength. I, by, only by checking the properties of a component, I know whether this has changed or not. There is no way that the navigation bar changes if it doesn't receive the likes variable as a prop. Likes has changed, but navigation bar doesn't have any way of knowing that something changed. Navigation bar, if I render it again, it will render identically as before. So there's no need of rendering it. And this will not be rendered. Question component. Question component depends on some properties. And this one has changed. So React understands that it needs to re-execute this component and re-render it. The list of answers doesn't depend on the state. So it does not need to be rendered. We just leave it alone. We don't need to recompute anything. And the lights component needs to be rendered. So what React does at this point is it renders the app component, understand that the app is composed of these uh, four children, and it checks that two of these four children need to be recomputed. And so we'll recompute those two children and recursively apply the same reasoning to them. Did any of the props of my children change? Then I need to recompute the children, to re-render the children. Only those whose property have changed. So if I change a state, I render myself. If I change one of the properties of my children, I render those children. And then what the React does is try to put everything together again. So it has some part of the DOM. Remember that the bottom line is always the DOM of the page, OK? So we already have a page with a DOM that came out of different components. Now we are re-rendering some of these components. And some other, no. Some other are just kept as they are. And React, after we execute the component, will surgically change only those parts of the DOM that need to be changed. So all the answers table will not, never be touched right, at the DOM level. Uh, the question component, uh, again, only one part of it will be changed. Because uh, the reasoning that we see at the, our children component, uh, React also does it uh, here. This part, this call component doesn't have any change. It will be recomputed, but it will be identical, so it doesn't need to be doesn't need to change the, the, the DOM itself. So in this recomputing, React really tries hard to do the minimum amount of work. Only those components that need to be rendered, and only if the rendering itself creates a different set of children, then the, the DOM is changed. Otherwise, it's kept as, the, as it is. OK, so we should not uh, worry you know, about the performance of these actions. And this can be done, this optimization can be done only because React has full control, full knowledge about what we are changing. Hmm? Um, of course, if we click on this light here at the bottom, nothing will change because it doesn't have the hint tender. To be able to enable also clicking on this other like string, we need to pass down also the event tender down to that. Uh, specific uh, component. So this is the way, the way we, we are handling it. Let's try to, uh, you know, we just started from this and try to, uh, to see the consequence of this uh, definition. OK, let's try to see them, no, review them in a more ordered fashion. 
Okay, so basically, uh, we create a state and we can modify the state by calling the setting function. This set function is, in most of the cases, called in response to some kind of event. Uh, why? Hmm. Good question. Thank you, Fulvio. Uh, just imagine if I wrote something like this. So I'm calling this set like function in the flow of execution. Not after one click of a user. Well, this is very dangerous because I'm creating an infinite loop. Why? Because I rendered a component with state equal, like equal to zero, and then I say, okay, I want to increase it. It will be increased to one, and since a state change, up is executed again. And if I execute up again, it will be increased again to two. And so it changed again, so I execute up again, and again, and again. No? Of course, nothing will ever render because uh, we have an error here, too many re-renders. React limits the number of renders to prevent an infinite loop. This is what we created. So we never see anything because the rendering of the page never completes. Every time I execute one render, I, the consequence is that it will schedule another render. So that is why the set functions for changing the state are always conditional. Should be conditioned by some other external event or something like that. But otherwise, we will just look forever. So never change the state in the sequential flow of a function. Second warning, never try to set a state directly. For example, if I wrote like something like that, likes equal likes plus one, instead of that. Likes. Why? I forgot to use the set likes function. Uh, what's the, okay. So I just increment this variable. Well, first of all, it doesn't let me because likes is a constant. <coughs> I declared likes as a constant, which is good because it remembers me that uh, inside the execution of a function, the value of likes, the value of a state can never change, will not change. And so declaring the state variable as constant is good. It prevents me from doing something bad like this, okay? Well, imagine I, may, I think I'm, I'm more clever than you, than React, and I change it like that, like that. So the error goes away. Oh, okay, likes is my state, I can change it. Huh? And what happens is that uh, the application doesn't work anymore. If I click here, I'm trying desperately to click, but nothing happens. Well, nothing happens. This code is executed. Of course it is. But what am I doing here? I'm redefining the reference to a local variable that was referring to a state variable, and now likes equal to. Equal means I'm creating a, a new reference to a new value. This new reference will change the local variable, of, uh, local value of likes, <coughs> of course. But this new value will uh, only last for the execution of this function, and will be forgotten. Forgotten. 
in the next, will not be saved in the state. I'm not saving a new value into the state. This is no different from uh, saying likes to another variable, which is a local variable that just, uh, in this case, we have a, a closure over this local variable. But I'm just reassigning a variable. So this variable, likes, will no longer be linked with the real state. I didn't change the value of the state. I changed the reference. I, you know, uh, I had a reference to the state. Now I don't have the reference anymore because I, I reassigned it to a different value. I broken the reference. I reassigned the variable. And so the state, the real state, never changes, doesn't change any, at all. So there's another error. Uh, one error is uh, setting the state unconditionally, that will create an infinite loop. The other error will be trying to change the state without going through the set function. And that is uh, useless, doesn't do anything. So let's go back to the real version, to the correct one. OK. Um, OK, this is what the, the, the important point is that the use state call, and this is common to all the hooks, is remembered across function calls. And this implies some, some uh, some uh, restrictions over the place where we can use the use state uh, um, function call. Uh, I will come to that in a moment. Uh, and the value of a state can be anything. Can be an integer like we did, can be a string, can be a boolean. The type of this object is basically set by the default value. And so normally we try to be consistent OK? And uh, once the, uh, an object is initialized with a Boolean, let's always change it to another Boolean. Or if, if it was initialized as an, as an integer, then we update it as an integer. But then the value inside the function can be used as a constant, like we do with, it, with any other props. OK? So actually, this is wrong. It's let. I should have written const. It would be better. Uh, we saw that uh, the body, all the modification must be done through the set function because they, otherwise they don't work. Mm -hmm. And we also know that the modification is asynchronous. So inside one, one, only ex one execution of the component, the value never changes. Set state means uh, please uh, change this value as soon as possible, but not now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So what is the argument of a set, of the setting function? The argument of setting function could be one, exp one value, one expression or one constant value, so true or likes plus one is a value that will be applied. Or it can be a function, a callback function. And this callback function will be called to recompute the new state starting from the old one. Um, and there's a reason for this. Because uh, what we did here is a bit dangerous. Um, I'm scheduling a function, increase likes uh, is a function. When I call this function, I'm executing the body of the function itself. Set likes with likes plus one. And then set likes will execute later. Set likes will execute later with the value of likes, uh, okay? That happens 
when I click on the button, when I click on the link. Uh, when I execute this instruction, at, when, sorry, when I call this function, increase likes, which is on the event handler, I will sort of uh, take a snapshot, the current value of likes, increase one, and uh, give it as an argument to set likes. And later on, set likes will apply this value. We'll apply a value that was somewhat old. Because at the time when set likes will change the value, maybe the likes had already changed for some other reason. This is an asynchronous change, will happen later. Huh? So, um, there's the risk, okay, of applying a state starting from an old value of likes that was current when I click on the button. But when the set likes will be really executed, will be no longer valid because it changed so I'm computing this expression when I click on the button. And I use the value of this expression when the state will be changed. In between, the state could also change for other reasons. Of course, I'm clicking so everything here is instantaneous. But imagine some of the operations are time consuming. They need to go to the server and get some data and so on. So it would be better to delay this computation until the moment in which the set state, set likes is, is executed. So in this case, instead of providing you a value, I provide you with a callback that computes the value. Starting from the old value, for the new old value, so for the value of the state that will be current later on when the set state is executed, and will return the new value itself. So basically, in this case, uh, the right way of doing that is uh, not giving you a value, but giving you a callback starting from the old value of likes and computing the new value, returning the new value like uh, the old likes plus one. So what I'm saying is that whenever you click on this button, I want to change the value. OK. So React will schedule the change of that value. When this state change will happen, it will call this function and take the last value of the state of likes and use it into this call, callback function for taking the, old, the new, the previous value I don't know, I, I, I don't have any, any verbs uh, for doing something that will happen in the future with an old value for, they will be old in the future, okay? And because I'm setting a new value starting from a previous value which uh, is future with respect to the current one. Okay, so it's a sort of a, of a past in the future or I don't know how to, how to write it, okay? Yes? No, because set likes understands that its argument is a callback and calls the callback instead of storing the value. Okay? So that actually, like the slide here is saying, we, we give, can give a value to any object or a function. And the function is interpreted as a callback. And this should be done every time the new state the value of the new state we want to compute depends on the previous value. And we want to delay as much as possible. Uh, so take it as a rule. If the argument, if the computation you need to do doesn't depend on the previous value, fine. Just put the value. If the computation depends on the current value and modifies, increases, complements it, or something like that, Always use a callback. 
And so you see that this callback here doesn't use the like, the value of likes. Doesn't use a closure. The closure will take the value of likes in the moment when the function is ex executed. Huh? Likes is not used there. Only a, a dummy variable that reports the possibly updated value of the state and returns the new value to be applied. And this avoids uh, any possible race conditions uh, when different callbacks are trying to update the same, the same variable. We ensure that the callback will always see the real latest value, even if the callback was scheduled time ago. And OK. So it's not a real error like we did before, but it's a risk uh, of uh, working with out-of-date values. Uh, the callback function must return a new object to be used at the state and should not try to modify the current state. So we have an argument, the old value, one could say, OK, let's try to modify it. Well, in the case of a number, you cannot because numbers are immutable. But in the case of an array, maybe you can, maybe we we'll want to try to add an element or whatever. Don't do that. Okay, always work in functional in a functional manner. If I have an array here, I need to add that one element. Let's return a new array with one more element. Don't try to modify it no? because what counts is the return value that is replaced to the old one. Always replace a value, never try to modify it. There's never a place in React where we are modifying a variable, OK? <coughs> so this is what we were saying before. If you have some counter, something like that, uh, always remember to schedule the change. When the set function has a closure over a local state, uh, uh, trigger your mind, it's better to use a callback where this closure is removed and the current state will be provided by React at the right moment. Um, OK. This is already something that we did. Uh, of course, uh, what we did before, it was to define an event tender and give the uh, value of the event tender to the, to the event itself. Uh, we could also write it uh, in line, of course. Okay, instead of writing uh, on click equal to a uh, name of a function, we could write the function in line if we only use it at once, okay? If it's only something local and so on. There's no difference. Just remember, always use a callback. Never call the function there, but set a callback to be called later on because the argument of on click is a function. Uh, must be a function. Um, okay, the default value, like we said, is the argument that you state is only used the first time. You only use the beginning, and then it's ignored in the, in the, in the, other, in the, other, in the next uh, execution. <coughs> um, we can initialize a state using a value coming from the props, it's not forbidden. But just remember that this value is only used the first time. So if the props change, the default value is not affected. Uh, so it's a bit, it's a strange uh, behavior. Use state only looks at these arguments once, once at the beginning. So don't expect uh, if a uh, prop changes that a state uh, will change immediately as a consequence. We see that uh, the consequence of this, uh, when we see the, the forms for modifying data and so on, where will be um, more evident. Hmm. Um, OK, well, this is another example of a counter that can be increased or decreased. 
we can use many states in a component. Okay? Every time we call use state in a component, it will create a new container, state container, with uh, the value, the current value, and the setting function. All these uh, use states should, should always be the first statement uh, in a function, in a component. Each state is a special value, like we said, okay? It's a special function. So the first time I execute this, it will create three state containers. The second time we call this function, it will need to associate uh, with these new variables, hidden and set hidden, count and set count, mode and set mode, will be new variables in the execution of the, fu or the function. They are local, fun local variables. So we'll associate the new variables to the old state containers. How can it do that? Well, it does it by order. The first new state is put into the first slot. The second new state is put in a second slot and so on. The second time we execute the function, we'll execute a new state and the first time we'll see, we'll associate it with the first slot. The second time we'll associate it to the second slot and so on, to the second slot of the previous execution. This means that we must guarantee that every time we call this component, we should always call the same number of use states in the same order. Your state doesn't have a name. It doesn't give you an ID of a state. It just stores that in, in order of appearance. So the rule is that, and this is general for many hooks, uh, the states uh, must, the use state functions must appear in the same number and in the same order across every call. Practically, you should never put a use state under an if statement or under a for statement or something that may change the order or the number of states that are generated. And the easiest way of doing that is put them at the beginning. At the beginning of the function, you just have the block of use states that declare these variables. So that every time the function is executed, you are sure, we are sure that the same use states will be called in the same order. If you try to put a use state inside that NIF, okay, but in this case, I don't need the state. Don't do that. The state is always there. It's associated with a component. We are declaring something, a resource, to be associated to a component. So we, now, we must follow some strict rules. So we see that use state is a special function that has special rules to be called. Once we learn them, we can live with them. It's not a normal function. It does something hidden for helping us, of course, for managing the state, and uh, we must deal with it carefully. Um, OK. This is an example of, uh, of uh, state lifting. OK, imagine we have uh, four buttons, uh, like where you want to choose your game. OK, so clicking on a button should highlight that button and uh, remove the highlighting from, from a previous one. So every button is a component. The component, to render itself, it must know whether it is selected. So it must receive information saying, I'm selected. And when, clicked, when this button is clicked, it should update this information that he is the selected one, OK? So the first thought would be, OK, every component, every button has a state, selected or not. And when I click on the button, the state will be, become selected or not selected. But this is not the right choice, because we want, when we select one button, we want to deselect the others. So one button should also know the selection state of other buttons and change the selection state of other buttons. And this means that the button itself is not the location of the state. It should be some upper component 
father of the four buttons that knows which of the four is selected. So in a way, in our component hierarchy, we can have this button, component, but they are children of some button group or whatever that has a, sele a state uh, called selected, maybe. And selected could be one, two, three, four. It's a number. And so we'll give to every button themselves, okay, you are a button and you are selected yes or no. You are a button and you are selected no or yes. Because they compare the position of this button with the number that tells me which button is selected. And when, when I click on some button, <clears throat> you need to call the set selected function of the father component. So each of these buttons must have at least two properties. One, tell me whether I'm selected, and the other, call a function when I want to be selected. And that function will go to the button group component that will try to update the selected state. And imagine that these four buttons will receive different set of properties. So the property will be the name of the first, an index, and selected equal to true. And the other will have different indexes and the selected equal to false. Okay? And this true or false is computed by our code, simply, by comparing the index of the component that we are rendering with the value of selected. So it's just a comparison. Index equal to selected, true or false. Whenever selected changes, the button group component will be executed. Selected will change. The true or false values of some of the buttons will change, of two of the buttons will change. One of them will become from true to false, and one of them will, become, will change from false to true, and the other two will not change. So only those two components will be re-rendered. And of course, the you know, visual state will, be, will, will change. OK? Um, so again, this, we have this uh, function that is able to change the state, which is in the same component that holds the state. <coughs> but the call of this function is from a lower component in the event handler. And uh, we need to pass this function down as a property. Because the only way of passing information is passing it down and passing as a property. You can never pass something up. So we, in reality, we call it the reverse flow of information. The normal flow of information is from, from top to bottom, and it goes through properties. The reverse flow of information is not possible technically, we make it possible by sending down callbacks. And these callbacks will change a value up. So the child component cannot see or cannot change a, a value from a previous component, from a parent, but it can call a callback that is defined by the father, and that callback will, through a closure, of course, uh, will change those values. So every time we say a component, I need to change something up there, I need to go there, up there, and create a callback and send it down as a property. Uh, as more as possible, try to state, state is the complex things about React. There's no doubt about that, okay? The complexity comes when we are dealing with state. It state changes, and we try to change it in many ways. So one suggestion is uh, we have some uh, local state, maybe a component that only needs to do something to itself, uh, to maybe be hidden or shown or something like that. So it's a local state. It's managed by the component itself. This is normally for visual stuff. Or we may have application state, where we have the data. And this normally is lifted up. 
and we try to have as few components as possible that have a state. Uh, the components uh, that only have properties and don't have states are easy. Are easy to write, are easy to debug, are easy to modify, and so on. Some components that, have, that, do, that who do have a state uh, needs also to have a set of callbacks to manage carefully that state. Okay? So let's try to concentrate on those. Maybe we have some components uh, that only manage the state, and some components that only do the rendering. And so they don't have any state, they receive everything as properties. Uh, and whenever something cannot be done in a component, think if, we, if it can be done at the parent component. So do this state lifting operation. Define the state one step up and pass down these two properties, the current value and the callback. Um, so this is what the, uh, the, the idea. No? Um, to put this idea in practice, what we want to try to do in our application is to transform the set of, the main state of our application is uh, the set of answers. So let's try to think about uh, how to manage uh, this information as a state variable or a set of state variables instead uh, or just a fake constant. Right now, the question and the answers are a constant. That's it. If we want to be able to allow this application to, make, to change the questions, and for example, what we are trying to do is implementing the vote up question, we need to be able to change those values. And this means that it cannot just stay into an array, the fake values, the fake question, it needs to be managed as a state. And we need to apply some modification of the state itself. Okay? The second one was try to add a new answer, but uh, maybe, probably, it will, will not be for today. Hmm? We'll need to, to study a bit about the forms. So, what I propose to do is after, <clears throat> after the break, Okay, try to do the same thing we did with the like function, but in this time with something much more complex, uh, which is the list of answers. Okay, and implement store them as a state, uh, and so we do all the rendering starting from the state this time, and then define the callbacks for doing the modification, for example, of the bot app. Okay, so let's have a break for now.